the sections. So it's boring. I'm not going to lecture you about it. But it talks about my view about human relationships and how it's not really rainbows and butterflies. So here you go. So let's go back to the time, if I may interrupt, before the taxes come up, before the busy days, back to the time where all my worries were centered upon being indecisive on which pencil I should use, or say yes to a ball game, or refuse. I still remember the efforts of making that Valentine's card for that special someone, hoping that the strokes and the colors would convince them that I am a complexity, worth the smiling, worth the noticing, worth the loving. Someone told me that love is unconditional and it shines through great little ways, that damsels in distresses gets the prince and all things fancy and beautiful, I think. A fairy tale love, a comfortable house, putting your heart on your sleeve and blouse. Yet there is indeed a stark difference that may exist between fairy tales and my bad hair day, like my old cardigans that seems to fray, the naughty leftover mascaras that will not go away. From the novels that tell me that rosette beautiful days means that it will be a good day, a perfect way, to smile and look at the sun, that's what they all say. I used to hold my rose-colored glasses like you, firmly and tightly like a student's in you, but heartaches grabbed them away from me and threw. It is useless now, boo-hoo. Maybe I should make room to something new. 22 have taught me that love could only be formed on an offer, and acceptance, and listing all the considerations, never about conjectures, never about chances. We create rigid rules of conditions to live by, as I have to give my deal, keep my word mouth aside, give you my comfortable silences between my embrace, and a few minutes to hold me like you need to. Yet those images of my handmade cards fly by. Life is full of compulsory meetings to rationally satisfy the irrational and desperate business transactions to cure the unquenchable yearning, to obtain that toy that you never got, and that heartache that I never forgot, to relieve the days of summer when staying up all night and dancing were more fun than having diamonds and gadgets. That will be a bridge, how unconscionable be. You say how cliche it is to think about being free. Now, darling, let's just talk about this for another time, shall we? Maybe a drink or two in my bedroom, Maybe I should listen to you when I get bored of my tea, or your tea. Maybe I'll do it when I can't understand more coming, as I prefer the mundane, Wall Street, and the profane. I am dancing aimlessly, endlessly, like a distressed ballerina, constantly pirouetting and dancing alone to my own melancholic and sad melody of walls and walls playing inside my head, waiting for you, waiting for the time when my toes will bleed, my back will ache, waiting for everyone to say, stop, that's enough, you've earned your dollar. It was never about the cards, the colors, and the peaceful ball games. It was never about standing in the rain, waiting for someone to give you some shade, some soup, and a hug to cure the pain. There was never a loyal audience to begin with, where I can feel genuine applauses and sympathies. There was never free tissues and a drink to ease my worries. No curtain call, no limelight, just my contracts that I need to provide to everyone, no need of me to fight for this constant inner battle. Should I stay quiet or knowingly prattle? Never mind, I will tell you, because the sky is still blue between you and me. I am still smiling between our unfinished conversations and hear the dizzying and spoken words that I learned to refine. Never mind, I will tell everyone, because I'm starting to lose all the beautiful dreams a romanticist will die for, and not so sure of fighting for some more until my secret pirouettes are hidden in the blocks of my social signature just as we agreed to our secret meetings, right? For now, I'm giving you this, my heart. You give me for what you think you are. Give up my nostalgia for something ridiculously more by leaving my rose-colored cards, my glasses, and the peaceful games out the door. I learned to sign my business transactions, not like before.